Lightburn includes multiple tools that aid in creating original designs or altering existing ones. One of these is the Edit Nodes tool, used to edit the nodes, lines, and curves that make up a shape. But what is a node? Sometimes known as anchor points, these are points along a line or curve that define a path. Each shape or vector graphic is made up of one or more of these paths. Being able to edit these nodes gives you pinpoint control for both modifying and repairing graphics. The Edit Node tool is located in the left toolbar underneath the Polygon tool. Hovering your mouse over the button displays the tooltip, where you can see the actions it can perform along with the associated key for each of them. In order to use the Edit Nodes tool with the given graphic, some conditions must be met. First, they must be paths. Using any of the basic creation tools to make rectangles, ellipses, polygons, and even text won't create graphics considered paths by Lightburn. This means that if you select them and click on the Edit Node tool, there won't be any nodes present. You'll first need to select all of these shapes, right-click, and choose Convert to Path. Now when you go back into the Node Editing tool, you'll see nodes and be able to use all of the tool's functions. It's important to know that when you convert a shape or text into a path, you'll no longer be able to modify shape or text properties. Next, in order to edit an object's nodes, it must not be grouped with any other objects. Here is an imported vector file that I want to make some changes to. We can see it's active by the moving squiggly lines, but when I click on the Edit Nodes tool, nothing happens. This is because the shapes of this vector are grouped. You can tell it's grouped because the selection pattern shows both dots and dashes, instead of just simple dashes. We can ungroup our shapes by clicking the single person silhouette in the top toolbar. Now, when we click on the Edit Nodes tool, it displays all of the nodes, lines, and curves that make up our graphic. Each of the squares and circles along the paths represent nodes, with circles being smooth and squares being corners. Smooth nodes or corner nodes with curves on one or both sides will have handles that allow you to manipulate the curves. For smooth nodes, the handles will always form a straight line. You can pull them and twist them to change the curve size or angle, but the resulting path will always be a smooth curve on each side of the node. Conversely, the handles on corner nodes move independently from each other, allowing you to get a sharp point, or have a curve on one side of the node and a line on the other. If there are lines on both sides of a node, there will be no handles at all. Each path will have at least one larger node in green. This represents the beginning point of the path and can be useful for verifying that a shape that appears closed is actually closed. If you're trying to run or preview a job and see an error saying you have shapes set to fill that aren't closed or are unable to use a Boolean operation with selected shapes, you can quickly fix this with the Edit Node tool. If you see two green nodes on the same path, that is a sure sign that the shape isn't closed. To repair, click and drag one of the green nodes into another to have them automatically join together, closing the shape. If you only see one green node on your path, but you're still warned that it isn't closed, you'll want to click and drag the node to verify or zoom in. It isn't uncommon for the break in a shape to be so small that it's not obvious without doing so. It's possible for a shape to start and end in almost the same place without the nodes actually being joined together. Now let's run through each of the actions that can be performed with this tool. Hovering your mouse over any corner node and pressing S will convert it to a smooth node. Doing the same over a straight line will give you handles, letting you turn it into a curve. You can also simply grab any part of a straight line and drag it to bend it into a curve. Pressing L while hovering over a curve will change it to a straight line. You can also convert a smooth node into a corner node by pressing C. If you want to simplify a shape, any node or line can be deleted by hovering over it and pressing D. To insert a node, mouse over any line or curve where you want it added and press I. If you want to add a node at the midpoint between two existing ones, press M. Pressing B over any node will create a break in the shape, letting you open any closed point on that shape. T lets you trim any line on a path back to the next line it intersects with. The behavior of this is similar to what happens when using the Weld tool, but you get additional control by being able to choose which of the overlapping lines you would like to trim, and you can use it with open shapes. In order to use the Trim tool on a path, it must intersect with another path. E is the Extend Line function. 
This is used to extend a path to the nearest intersection point. It works with both lines and curves, but there are a few requirements for this function. First, it can only be used on a start or end point of an open path. The smaller brown in between nodes will not work. Similar to trim, there also must be another path in your workspace that it can intersect with once extended. In this first example, if I hover over the end node and press E, nothing will happen. This is because there are no other shapes in line with the path for it to extend to. As soon as I move a shape into its path and press E on the node again, we can see the line extends to it. Last but certainly not least is the align to angle function, which lets you align any number of shapes to the nearest horizontal, vertical, or 45 degree angle. To use it, select the object or objects you want to rotate. With the node tool active, hover over the line you want to align and press A. The line will snap into place and any additional selected objects will rotate with it. As you can see, the edit node tool is incredibly powerful and versatile. Whether you're designing original graphics or adjusting a design you sourced elsewhere to get it laser ready, knowing its capabilities will give you precision control of your projects. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos on Mastering Lightburn.